In my role as an intel analyst, I had to understand our adversaries' missile capabilities and the threat they pose to U.S. interests in a given region. This intelligence collection activity will help shape decisions from policymakers to protect American lives and assets. We've already seen some of the effects of the rising tensions in the South China Sea. As such, we've turned our attention into gathering intelligence about the People's Liberation Army rocket force and their new ship-killing DF-26 missiles. After collecting some background information, our key question becomes what threat these missiles pose to U.S. flagged vessels in the South China Sea. Additionally, the DF-26 has been reported to be able to carry conventional and nuclear warheads, allowing for a precision strike on land. So we also need to determine what threat they pose to U.S. territory in the Pacific. I composed this story map briefing with the latest in Esri technology and unconventional sources I was able to access while at home. I want to show you how we got here and how access to the latest technology allowed us to stay vigilant, even while working remotely due to COVID-19. At home, I have access to intelligence that I may not have considered previously. A search for DF-26 missiles turned up some fascinating results. The first result is this report from the Chinese state-run media agency, The Global Times. They reported that the DF-26s were sent to a training base directly in response to a U.S. ship passing through the South China Sea. Similarly, this video loaded to YouTube from the South China Morning Post, another Chinese state-run media agency, gives us the reported maximum range and touting this missile to have the ability to hit a moving vessel such as an aircraft carrier. Going beyond the propaganda, the exercise was confirmed and a training area mapped by the Federation of American Scientists with this report from 2019. They also provided what they believe to be the maximum effective range of 4,000 kilometers. That's the number we will use going forward. I also found two reports from Jane's. The first confirms the exercise took place and identifies an image signature of the launchers. And the second confirms that these missiles have been developed as anti-ship ballistic missiles. In early 2020, it looks like the DF-26s have been deployed again. Follow reporting by the Federation of American Scientists indicates new positions, new positions in eastern China and perhaps an increased threat. I'll need to add these new locations to the map and rerun some analysis. So let's get into ArcGIS Pro. In my map, I already have our locations from 2019 here in glowing red, and a threat assessment ring based on these locations, showing the number of cities and the potential population of those cities. All the 2020 settings now. Access to the latest release of ArcGIS Pro makes updating the map with new locations much simpler. Technology enhancements make it possible to load a file and extract locations directly from it. With this interface, all I need to do is drag the Word document I created from the Federation of American Scientists webpage into the input parameters and provide a name. So I can compile future sightings to the same layer. I'll create a template. The template allows me to match the symbology with the rest of my cartography and carry on the same feature class going forward for additional analysis. That way, anytime I need to add something new, it is simply appended. After hitting Extract, in a matter of seconds, ArcGIS Pro has scanned through that entire document and plotted the new sighting on the map. To be impactful, intelligence needs to be shared to the right people, and I need to put this where the rest of my team has access. ArcGIS Pro and ArcGIS Portal are linked through my identity. This seamless integration allows me to share a web map directly from my desktop. I need to provide a summary and a few tags to make this map discoverable before I can publish it. And then I can choose to share this map in a variety of ways, either at the organizational level or directly to my group. With the team dispersed at our homes, access to WebGIS allows us to take the processing from our laptops and put it on the cloud or server side. That way we can worry less about compute power and more about our analytics. Using the built-in analytics of the web map, I'll create a range ring by buffering new locations. I'll choose our new 2020 sightings and put in the range given to us by the Federation of American Scientists, 4,000 kilometers. I also want a single range ring, so I'll choose the dissolve feature, and then run the analysis. 
turning on our new range ring seems to indicate that more U.S. territory is indeed in range when the missiles are positioned in eastern China. But these are ship killer missiles, and I need to see which and how many U.S. ships are at risk. For this, I'm leveraging Bender data from Spire and ArcGIS Velocity. ArcGIS Velocity is a new real-time big data analytics platform. By creating a big data analytic, I can ingest the entire live Spire feed, containing over 3 million vessels. I can pre-filter the feed by specific attributes and time ranges, so I only have to run analysis over the ships I'm interested in. I can further filter the attributes by U.S. flag vessels only and write those results out to a layer in my map. Turning the layer on, we can see the number of U.S. vessels that, is, that, are, in with, that are in range of the DF-26. So now we know which vessels can be targeted. The last thing I need to do is configure the pop-up so our analysis is ready to be viewed at a mouse click. To configure pop-ups, I'm using Arcade, a scripting language built specifically for use in ArcGIS. I'm going to use Arcade to perform a spatial query and then pull data from other layers and format that return into a list. In a few lines of code, the Arcade expression will query the vessels layer, determine which ships intercept the range ring, and return those as a nice list. Now we have all of our analytics at a mouse click. We can understand the number of cities in range, the estimated population of those cities, the number of U.S. vessels, and a comprehensive list of U.S. flagged ships that are in the area and could potentially be targeted by the DF-26. Now the map is ready to be saved and shared. With our new map embedded into the story map, our briefing tool is complete. We have the background information, we have the video I found, the 2019 map, and our brand new 2020 map, complete with the analytics right at our fingertips. All of what you saw was made possible by access to the latest technology and unconventional sources while at home. Because the ArcGIS platform has been deployed across multiple networks, I can continue my work on the high side when I get back to the shop. I can tap into additional sources and complete the assessment. By combining analysis from home with the analysis from the high side, I can give decision makers the most timely and relevant intelligence.